The Neurological Examination of the Upper Limbs Begin this examination by asking the patient to remove his or her shirt and to sit over the edge of the bed. Hello Richard, nice to see you. Um, I'd like to examine your arms. If you wouldn't mind taking your shirt off and sitting on the edge of the bed, and, and I can do that. Examine the motor system systematically every time. Inspect for wasting, both proximally and distally, and for fasciculations. Don't forget to include the shoulder girdle in your inspection. Okay. I'd like you to put your arms straight out in front of you, like this, with your palms up, and then close your eyes and just hold them there. Ask the patient to hold both hands out, palms up, with the arms extended, and to close the eyes. Look for drifting of one or both arms, which can be due to upper motor neuron weakness, a cerebellar lesion, or posterior column loss. Also note any tremor or pseudoathetosis due to proprioceptive loss. Feel the muscle bulk next, both proximally and distally, and note any muscle tenderness. Do you have any pain? Any Test tone at the wrists and elbows by passively moving the joints at varying velocities. Assess power at the shoulders, elbows, wrists and fingers. Okay, just shrug your shoulders up for me please. Push up hard. Okay, that's good. Shoulder abduction. Ask the Next, patient to abduct the like arms that. with Hold the elbows flexed firmly, and, and resist your attempt down. to push them down. Adduction. Ask the patient to adduct the arms with the elbows flexed now, and not to allow you to separate them. Your sides. Heart. That's good. Thank you. Elbow flexion. The patient should bend the elbow and pull so now, as not to let you straighten it. You. Pull hard. Yep, harder. Okay, it's good. And now, I'd like you to put your thumb towards your face and pull up again. Pull up hard. Okay, relax. And try this side. Pull towards you. Okay, relax, change the angle. Thumb up towards your nose and pull towards you. That's it, good. Extension. All right. The patient should bend the elbow and push so as not to let you bend it. Now, just straighten your arm down towards your knee. Hard. Okay, that's good. And this side, down towards you need. Wrist flexion. The patient should bend the wrist and not allow you to straighten like it. Don't let me straighten it up. Okay. And this side. Keep it, keep it flexed. Good. I'd like you to put your wrists, cock them up straight. The patient up should like extend the wrist and not allow Don't you to bend straighten it. Straighten them. That's good. Finger extension. The patient should straighten the fingers and not allow the examiner to push them down. Now you put your fingers straight out and hold them there. Good. Finger flexion. Ask the patient to squeeze two of your fingers. I'd like you to just Never squeeze harder three. on my fingers. Now again, squeeze these hard, don't let me take them out. That's good. Okay. On your finger knee, abduction. Just spread your fingers the apart patient like should that. spread out the fingers and not allow you to push them so together. So don't let me push these fingers together. That's good. And spread these fingers apart. Just rest them there. Again. Finger adduction. There, Ask the patient to keep the fingers together against okay. your attempts to separate them. Side. And resist me pulling your fingers apart. Resist. Now test for an ulnar nerve lesion. That's good. Sign. I'd like you to hold this card Ask the patient to grasp a piece of paper between the thumb and lateral aspect and of the forefinger on each hand. If the sign is positive, the affected thumb will flex because of loss of its adductor muscle. Again, grip it tightly. Hold it there. Good. Thank you. And now test for a median nerve lesion. Pen touching test. Ask the patient to lay the hand flat, palm upward on the table, and attempt to abduct the thumb vertically to touch the examiner's pen position. held above it. Now hold that thumb this may be impossible if there is a median nerve palsy at the wrist That's or good. above. 
and on this side again, touch the uh, tip of the pen, gets your thumb in the right position, and now hold that there and don't let me put it down. Yeah. Okay. Now test the like reflexes. You just fold your arms Begin with the biceps jerk. And just Place one forefinger on the biceps tendon and tap this with the tendon hammer. The hammer should be held near its end and the head allowed to fall with gravity. Normally, if the reflex arc is intact, there is a brisk contraction of the biceps muscle with flexion of the forearm at the elbow. This is followed by prompt relaxation. If a reflex appears to be absent, always test following a reinforcement manoeuvre. For example, ask the patient to clench the teeth tightly just before you let the hammer fall. Okay, I'd like you to clench your teeth very tightly, please. Go now. And relax. Do it again. And relax. Now test the triceps jerk. Support the elbow with one hand and tap so over the triceps like tendon. That. Stay loose. Normally, triceps contraction results in forearm extension. And again, just relax this arm right there. The brachioradialis or supinator jerk is next. Strike the lower end of the radius just above the wrist. To avoid hurting the patient by striking the radial nerve directly, place two fingers over this spot and then strike the fingers. Normally contraction of the brachioradialis causes flexion of the elbow. Now test the finger jerks. The patient rests the, pa the hand palm upward with the fingers slightly flexed. The hammer is struck over the examiner's fingers which have been placed over the patient's. Normally slight flexion of all the fingers occurs. Just relax your fingers there. Examination of coordination tests cerebellar function. Begin with the finger nose test. Ask the patient to touch his or her nose and then your outstretched finger. Like Demonstrate you, um, the movement. And now reach out and touch my finger. Look for intention tremor, forth, which is tremor time. increasing as the target is approached. And for past pointing, where the patient's finger overshoots the target towards the side of the cerebellar abnormality. Let's try the other side. Okay, that's good. What I'd like you to do is on the back of, of your hand, like you take your other hand, and to alternate um, front and back like that, and then go as fast as you can. Now test the patient's ability to perform rapidly alternating movements. Slow and clumsy now, performance like of these thing, movements is called dysdiadokokinesis. Okay, right, Richard, what I'd now like test to do rebound. this time Ask uh, the patient to lift the arms rapidly arms from the sides and then stop. And then you're going to lift them straight up with Hypotonia your arms up like that due to cerebellar disease causes delay to in stopping the arms. Shut, and then you do it quickly. Okay. Remember that muscle weakness okay. may also cause clumsiness, okay, but motor more. testing should have revealed any impairment okay, of this sort. You. And can you put your arms straight out now? And now just close your eyes and hold and keep your hands in that position even though I'm going to try to move them. Okay, thank you. It is usually best to examine the sensory system last. It can be a difficult examination because it is subjective. Look for scars that may have caused nerve damage. First test the spinothalamic pathway, pain and temperature. What I have here is a pin. It's been blunted so it shouldn't hurt, but it should still feel sharp. And I'm just going to demonstrate it by touching your chest. Now, does that feel sharp? Yep. Okay, and does it feel sharp on this side? Yep. Right, I'm going to be touching you on your fingers and various parts of your hands, and you just tell me when you feel it is sharp, but your eyes need to be shut. Okay? okay. All right. Yep. Sharp. Test each dermatome. Map the abnormal area and fit any sensory loss into a pattern. Sure. Test that the patient understands that the sensation should be sharp. By turning the pin over 
and touching with the blunt side occasionally. Always use a disposable neurological pin. It is not usually necessary okay, to test temperature. You. Next test the posterior column pathway, vibration and proprioception. Use a 128 hertz tuning fork to assess vibration so sense. Tell me what do you feel when I put it there? It's vibrating. Okay, and on this side? It's vibrating. All right. Now, I'd like you to close your eyes and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually touch your fingers and you just tell me when you can feel it. Now what I need you to do is tell me when it stops. It stopped. Okay. If the vibration sense is absent distally, try again on the wrist, elbow, and if necessary, the shoulder. Now examine proprioception, starting with the distal interphalangeal okay. joint of the little finger. I'm going to push it down. All right, with your eyes closed. Down, down, up. Okay, I'm going to try this side. Keep your eyes shut. Movement of a few degrees is usually detected by the patient. This is a cotton ball, and I'm going to do the similar... Test light thing. touch with cotton wool. Touch the skin lightly, but do not stroke in each you. dermatome. Okay. Would it feel the same on both sides? Yes. Okay. 